So, we come to the last of this uh, introduction to the basis of behavior uh, of this first week module. And briefly, I would like to tell you the interface of psychiatry with the other branches. Psychiatry, psychology, being a neuroscientist and a neurologist, they all deal with brain, as do neurophysiologists and other research things. But largely, neurology is a branch which is very closely associated and a huge overlap with psychiatry. Psychology is the basis of it all, but what does psychology do? Psychology is a study of human behavior as I told you and uh, it is pretty old, uh, but the western concept of psychology which we all know is maybe 200 years. Lot of these paradigms which we use in research whether it is imaging or EEG or cognitive, they come from the definitions which psychology has given us. And so, psychology has its various roots, but its close interaction with psychiatry is because both are concerned with behavior. The framework of normal behavior comes from psychology and the abnormalities which arise with the functioning of brain, whether it is because of illness or because of some other cause is to be treated by psychiatry. For, so, for a psychiatrist, to know psychology is the mandatory first step. And as you said, where, how, why, where, why do we need psychology and in what? We need psychology to understand the cognition, the social behavior, the development, the clinical, the education. So, it is asking how and why of our behavior of individual and group. Why it is important? Because these parameters and these definitions define what is normal, as we will talk about this when we talk about classifications. Because unless we define normalcy, we really cannot move and go ahead with what is abnormal. So, what is the truth? There was a huge debate all this while, whether it is biology or psychology. In between, there was this, I should not say onslaught, but discovery of genetics. And there was a phase, when everybody thought that genetics would explain everything of human behavior. But to our surprise, this was a debate which was continuing from the past by nature or nurture. Whether it is the nature which makes somebody or it is the nurture, whether the upbringing. But what we found out is, that both genetics, nature and nurture both probably combine and that is where psychology steps in with biology to probably define the framework for psychiatry. So, it as it is shown here, the pup that is raised by an anxious low nurturing mother becomes an anxious adult and a pup that is raised by relaxed high nurturing mother becomes a relaxed adult. So, both step in. The neurobiology the neurobiology cannot explain everything. It has to interface with what we call epigenetics. It is a old debate, but now probably after a full circle, both are coming to sort of collaboration. That people are born with genetics, their temperament, their predispos genetic predispositions, with their own unique set of potentialities, but it is the upbringing and a bringing not in the sense of when you are a child, right from the moment you are conceived in the womb, the mothers, the environment of mothers womb, the exposure to toxins, the stress level of mothers and all that undergoes which brings in a chemical change affects how your 10 to the power 10 neurons are going to grow and how are they going to wire together. How are they going to make connections which will form your unique behavior pattern and that probably is temperament. So, a brief look at psychology before we move on to psychiatry from the next week would be worthwhile. So, these are the some of the schools, structuralism focus on the structure of basic elements of mind. Functionalism, William James is the most famous psychologist, he still influences psychology. Gestalt as I said, 
uh, if you remember I showed you that picture in the last few lectures, where if you give, if there is a gap in information, the brain tends to bridge it through its internal generated stimuli to make a full picture. This is a part of cognitive psychology, but probably the most famous of psychologists was Dr. Sigmund Freud. He almost brought a revolution into the way and he was the man who introduced unconscious mind. He, the whole psychoanalysis went out of fashion or rather went under modification, but as neurobiology and neurophysiology is again bringing back, there is a possibility that he may have really been telling the truth, may not be the full truth. He said an unconscious mind is where we push or repress all our threatening urges and these urges when they come out, they create nervous disorders. So, he gave a structure of a brain call of mind e, e ego super ego. Remember this is talking about mind and not really the anatomical structure of the brain. He stressed the importance of early childhood experiences, which epigenetics is talking about these days. So, and after that there have been post Freudians and there have been neo Freudians. Psychoanalysis is now more used in therapy on day to day, but various versions called psychodynamic theories, they, they have really influenced the way psychotherapy is done. And actually Freud was pushed out by behaviorism, the science of behavior that focuses on observable behavior. Starting from Pavlov and then to Skinner, they and Watson and they were very clear that all this what we do is learn it. It is not happening from unconscious, it is not happening from any repressed desire, it is not happening on its own, it is the learned behavior which we exhibit every time we do something. Cla and we all know classical conditioning versus operant conditioning. This is the basis of behavior therapy which is used for uh, psychodynamic as I said is a, a modern version of psychoanalysis. Behavioral perspective use the behavior therapy, some of them are like exposure response prevention and sens desensitization, especially in phobias and anxieties. B. F. Skinner was one of the most prominent uh, psychologists. And then the third revolution came was humanistic pers perspective, Carl Rogers, Maslow, they emphasized that human being has a certain potential and there is a ability of human being to self actualize. Unconditional love, dignity, they are the concepts which are used in human, humanistic based therapies, but they are a general principles which have, have been adopted by more or less other schools also. There is a biopsychological perspective which attributes human and animal behavior to biological events in the body such as genetic influences. Cognitive psychology is the, is the revolution which is still on, which focuses on basically cognition the memory, the intelligence, the perception, problem solving, learning, all the conscious aspects or the partially conscious aspect which are broadly can be brought under thinking. And it says that there is a lot of thinking can go in altering the human behavior, now, which is in direct contrast to what Freud was saying that all is unconscious and it is all pushing from within uh, the urges and emotions. So, Freud whereas he gave more importance to emotions and the hidden urges, cognitive psychology is more oriented towards the, the, the conscious aspect of human behavior, the truth may lie in between or somewhere else. So, where is the interface with psychiatry? The interface is with psychological assessment, with theoretical understanding of behavior and the concepts and frame for further research in neurosciences. Psychotherapy is an alternative modality for some of the illnesses which we are going to discuss in future. Beyond the, so it is normally called a talking cure, it is not exactly a talking cure, so only some of the methods use talking, rest of them require a lot of training. Psychoanalysis as perpetrated by Freud was a very, very long process where the person was allowed to free associate, bring out all the memories and thoughts from within the head. The dynamic therapy were a shorter versions which were brought out on the basis of defense mechanisms which Freud proposed. Defense mechanism are the processes in the brain 
which brain uses to alter the threatening stimuli, what is not acceptable to brain and give it a different shape. Like humor is considered to be one of the mature defenses, repression is one of the uh, where you push your threatening stimuli, what your mind is not accepting to the unconscious mind. The and so, there are the many of them. So, they form the basis of all the unconscious processing. So, based on that shorter versions of psychodynamic therapies, behavior therapies are the one which are based on what Skinner proposed, exposure response prevention, flooding sensitization. These are used a lot these days in anxiety disorders, where maybe somebody just to give an example, if somebody sees a any stimulus, any any object or say go, going on a height and gets into a panic, severe anxiety and in the process starts avoiding it or even thinking about it gives a sort of panic attack. Exposure response prevention would make a hierarchical list of situations where this fear comes, expose the person to those situations and avoid the usual response of running away. Help him to sub, to tolerate and go through that anxiety and on repeated exposure this anxiety starts decreasing, which can make the person confident in overcoming that fear. Cognitive behavior therapies again uh, was is, is a module of therapy, where the person is trained to alter his behavior through his thought. We all magnify thoughts, we all use irrationality, we minimize something, we magnify something, we, it is a normal human process. For some people, they these cognitive distortions become so troublesome that it is actually is almost creating a sort of illness. Uh, cognitive behavior therapy is very useful in depression and other personality disorders. So, I will end with this with just to sum up in this whole first module is now we know that brain is almost like a parallel modular structure, parallel processing is going on right from the time it is switched on in the womb, it the electrochemical activity continues still the brain keeps firing in the process creating uh, certain certain oscillations in the brain through the summation of inhibitory and stimulatory post synaptic potentials and the activity of the neurons. These isolations, this, this uh, electrical activity is mediate, mediated between the neurons through neurotransmitters, the levels of which determine the receptor level and the levels of which also determine the behavior, because alteration in neuro, neurochemistry leads to different behaviors and behavior aberrations. How psychiatry treats with medication is by altering these neurotransmitter levels. We will discuss it in, in future lectures, but the behavior largely is happening, lot of it is kept out of your conscious mind. The unconscious mind processes all the information creating a composite picture, uniting all the various sensations into your mind and presenting to your conscious mind a composite uh, frame of reality through which the, the higher centers of the brain decide whether to act or to emote or to thought. There are mirror neurons in the brain, which help us understand the feeling and the thought of the other person, not exactly reading the thought, but understanding what the other person is meaning or feeling. This gives us a, a, a frame to interact socially. We have developed technology through which we can either look into the areas by providing appropriate task into the areas where the brain is which area of brain is uh, specialized for what, we know a little bit, but the research is on it will tell us more and more. We may not know the core process of the brain still, because there is a lot of mathematics and physics of the brain, which uh, I have not discussed here. So, the core process still have to be discovered, but for clinical purposes and research purposes, by providing appropriate frame of task from psychology, which, which we have derived from psychology. We give the task and then measure EEG or MRI or see the behavioral output. Uh, so, this is how broadly the whatever we have tried to cover is not comprehensive, but I am sure it will give you a gross idea of what is happening. 
So, from next module for the next week, we will talk about uh, the classification and the mental status examination in psychiatry. Thank you.